Hello, this is MakerJar101, and welcome to part three of the internal explosion engine video, where we take this old compressor and convert it into an internal combustion engine. So, so far, in part one, if you haven't watched it already, but you should, is we took the compressor part, extracted the very nice piston and cylinder and crank, which we're going to use. In part two, we put the ports in, so that's basically the intake and exhaust valves, but the piston acts as a valve because it's a two-stroke. And in this part, which is part three, we're going to be taking this old Intel heat sink and converting it into the head of the engine. So we're going to be putting this spark plug in it, and we're going to be mounting it on top of the engine, something like that. All right, so this is the heat sink I'm going to use. I was originally thinking this heat sink, but then I decided that one's too big and ugly, so I decided to go with this one. Now, why I chose these two heat sinks was these have a very thick bottom plate. If you have a thinner part, it's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to thread anything into it because what I need to actually do is thread this spark plug into the base. So you need at least enough meat that it threads in pretty good and that the bit of the spark plug doesn't stick out and hit the piston. So yeah, basically you need a pretty thick bottom part. So let's get rid of that thing, we don't need that. Um, so I've been thinking about this for a few days now, and I can't think of any way to really drill a hole down through these fins without mangling them up to death. And yeah, so what I think I'm gonna do is just cut all of these fins away so that I actually have room to work, and then this will be a little bit of cooling over here, which will still be adequate. And then if, if I really like, dis dislike that, I can chop it off later. So mainly what we're looking for is just this block of aluminum. That's the mainly mainly the important part, we don't really care too much about the fins because we can just dump water on this engine if it gets hot, so. <laughs> about here, cut there. All of this has to go. Let's get cutting. So in the first video where I put my saw blade on backwards, I really don't think there's a way that's backwards, but you guys roasted me live, so I actually have it on right this time. We'll see how it cuts. Ooh, that doesn't sound very good. One Intel heatsink destroyed. All right, so here's my heatsink all cut out. So now what we gotta do is put a hole for the spark plug, tap that, and then we have to put four holes for the mounting bolts that were originally holding the head on the compressor. So we gotta make those holes. So I'm pretty much just gonna use this as a template. One is done. Let's put that in there so it doesn't move. And let's do next. So then this will bolt right on there. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. Lots of thread engagement. That'll be real happy. It's a little bit off, but not bad. Not bad. As I said in the last video, good enough for government work. Now we gotta measure in here a little bit. Do a little bit of like, no, measuring. We don't need to measure. All we need to do is simply this. Mm-hmm, now, we go like this. We take a marker, we go like how? And then we go like, no, center. There we go. Easy enough. Now I need my center punch. Just so you know, it is Harbor Freight. Now let's just start with like a 1 8 inch hole in the center here. Today we're going to be abusing my 3 quarter inch paddle bit because we kind of need to clear out this forest of fins. 
it's aluminum, so it's soft, so it's not going to ruin the paddle bit, but we just have to go slow and not overheat it. But just wobble out the forest of sawed off pins, I guess. Shiny flat metal. That worked beautifully. I wonder if I could have actually drilled through the, all the pins like that. So now all we have to do is drill the right size hole for the spark plug. So this spark plug that I bought for $4 has M10 by one threads. Now you could buy a tap to do that. Me, nah. We're just gonna use a 3 8 drill bit because it's pretty close. It's a little bit uh, smaller than the outside diameter of these threads. So we'll get a tiny bit of thread engagement, but really not very much. I don't really care that much because I'm gonna use um, some like Teflon tape on it anyway. So we're pretty much just gonna force that in there. And it'll cut its own threads for the most part. Try to get it in kind of straightish. It's semi-important, I guess. How important though? Mm. Probably not that important, if it was considered. Hey, they're actually like pretty good threads. They feel pretty good. I mean, this is really soft aluminum too. These things tend to be really soft. Dang it, that actually looks pretty darn good. I am 100% happy with that. Oh yeah, that is, that is excellent. I couldn't ask it for something better. All right, so let's, uh, well, what should we do? Okay, that was easier than I thought. Um, okay, so as you can see, the bit of the spark plug just sticks up a little bit, and also the piston comes up just a little tiny bit past the top of the casting there. So essentially this is, recipe for that thing getting smashed a lot. So I bought this cork rubber sheet. This is three thirty seconds thick that uh, just the auto parts store. And so this has a lot of thickness to it, which I think should be enough. So this is going to be our head gasket. Um, the other thing we could do is just build this up with JB Weld. I originally thought about doing that, but then I decided not to. I decided to go with something a little bit less janky. Okay, we're going to need one of those, and that's going to be our head gasket. Oh, that's actually not bad. Okay, that'll work. Okay, so I've decided the best way to do these holes is to basically just take the bolt, center it over to the hole, and then give it a whack, and it'll punch a hole. Seems pretty easy. Let's get a side shot of that. Side shot of the action. So center the bolt over the hole, and just give it a whack, or a few whacks, and as you can see it punched a hole, and then you have to dig the bit out of the hole here, there we go, it's not too hard really. Let's trim some of this in here. Oh yeah, that's got lots of lots of room now. So I think that should be pretty good. Let's put the head on and see what it looks like, I guess. <laughs> I 
I hear leakage around the spark plug. That's the oil spraying out. Feels like it's got pretty good compression so far though. And it's not hitting the spark plug, which is good. So I honestly think we're pretty good in business. Yeah, spark plug is leaky. Leaky spark plug. Okay, so let's put a little bit of Teflon tape on the spark plug, see if we can't get rid of that leak. As you can see, it's got excellent compression, and I think the flywheel might be big enough. All right, so you guys have made it to the end of part three, where we actually made it look quite a bit like an engine. So we finished the head, uh, made it out of an old heatsink, and put a spark plug in it, and it's starting to look take shape, and it's got compression that feels excellent. Probably too much compression, especially for this flywheel, because well, this flywheel is just not going to have enough momentum to actually get it to turn over, I don't think. But we'll cross that road eventually. So there's probably two solutions we could do is either slap a bigger flywheel on here or put some shims in here to decrease the compression ratio. And that'll just uh, decrease how much energy is needed to complete a stroke. Um, so, but yeah, I think everything's looking pretty good. Um, I'm psyched to see if this is going to work or not. I'm pretty sure it's going to work but I'm still psyched to see it run the first time. Um, so part four is gonna be the next part, and we're going to be encasing the crankcase because this is a two-stroke, so we need to basically pressurize this when the piston comes back. Uh, we need to pressurize this with fuel-air mixture. So we need to figure something out down here. So that's what we're gonna be doing in part four. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. The comments help a lot because all the suggestions really helped me out. So just you guys' thoughts on everything. So that's awesome. Keep it up. And as always, thanks for watching and keep experimenting.